Hello, this is Monday Night Get Newt. I'm Thirsty, and today we shall be hopefully wrapping up slightly more uh, the six months of plot that has finally brought us back to here, where everything should have been about 20 weeks ago. Um, so, uh, before we go any further, I shall elucidate as to what the hell you're watching, because you might not know. Um, uh, we should be playing uh, Nuked, which is a setting of the Spiced System, which I co-wrote with Volanda, who's far more famous and does stuff. And I don't, because I'm lazy uh, and ill. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, we have some players and some rules for chat. Which order should we do those in? What do we think? Rules for chat, then players. Players, then rules for chat. Nodding rules is not chat helpful. First. Rules for chat first. <laughs> there you are, you've volunteered. <laughs> so, those rules are again. Don't be a tool about someone's race. Don't be a tool about someone's gender. In general, just don't be a tool. Or a screwdriver. Exactly. And there we are. And being that, being that you know, a certain young man has seized the initiative. Introduce yourself, sir. I, I am Ivor. I will be playing. I'll be playing Zeke. I forgot for a moment there. Um, the, the the brave, the valiant. The, the, the always up for a, a challenge, not at all cowardly or sneaky. Um, be interesting to get back to interesting in getting back to Ooze Town as quick as possible to resolve this stuff with Morgan and leave the south. <laughs> yes, your uh, your foray down from the north hasn't been uh, quite as uh, pleasant and, and, and smooth as you hoped. You definitely haven't found out what happened to Jerry's brother. Nope. And hopefully we'll find some answers in uh, in the fort. Yes. So, to hop again to the left, we shall have a Lilf. Who shall you be playing tonight? I will be playing Anita, the very, very, very hacked off not been in such uh, a mess of events for a hundred or so years. Ever so slightly annoyed with the people who have tried to blow her up, get her killed, induced her to kill other people, almost burn to death, almost drown, almost die on a sinking ship, almost get shot outside a brothel. Or three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love, I love, I love, particularly love the way that you phrase that. You still haven't elucidated whether that's your nominal foes or your nominal friends, but exactly. I'm, I'm liking the phrasing. It's good. It's so, so good. It's <laughs> perfect English. So, uh, without further ado, we shall hop to our final player. For we no longer have a fourth. Um. Because that was getting a bit hard to handle. <laughs> Especially with him trying to kill you all. Um, so, Spanners. Hello, I am Spanners. Um, I am playing Timmy, who is clearly not a pacifist. Um, but basically, ba based on the fact that she is not a pacifist, is currently down to one hit point. So may or may not survive uh, to the grand finale. She is apparently doing her best not to survive. Um, and I don't think Anita is in any mood to make that any better. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But I'd just like to point out that she did give Anita a beer when she really needed one. Yeah, That's... <laughs> I'm sure that helps in some way for burning down several brothels and shooting people in the face. Well, as we may recall from last time, or possibly not, we have, in fact, noted down, or I have, in fact, noted down in the corner of my little page of notes here, stats for Jerry. So if one of you does die, we can... <laughs> <laughs> your your player essence c can possess Jerry and continue the fight in, in the manner of someone who's small and weak and can't speak or, or will use weapons or wear armor. So, 
Yes. There we are. We have our lovely players. We have our rules for chat. We have Caron in the chat talking about cornflakes. Um, so, without further ado, uh, we shall establish the scene. Does anyone remember where we are? Does it remember we just reached the road? Exactly. You you have just stumbled out of uh, of the mud of, of the estuary between uh, between Oostown and Moorcrud. Uh, you've found the ruins of an old road. Uh, and you are basically stumbling along it. I believe at least one of you is more than half dead. Uh, I'm not sure if more than one of you is more than half dead. I don't know what I'm Zeke's fine. state of health is. Zeke's not bad. Uh, on a scale of 0 to 19, there's a, a solid 14. Ah, well, there we are, you know. He's, he's not having a great day, but as far as things could be, you know, not bad. So, I assume you're probably helping Timmy in some way? Even if it's just like, yeah, don't step there. <laughs> Z Z Zeke is the type of person not to leave anyone else behind in any circumstance, so it would sort of be uh, as best as his crippled legs will uh, allow um, well, his, his dodgy foot and otherwise burnt leg would, would allow supporting Timmy along. So you're helping each other along, and that's that's what we did good of you all. Right. Oh, where were we? On a road. We were on a road. We were helping Timmy in some small way amble along as she recovers a few seconds after having a metal pole jammed through her. I believe it was your left hip. Yes. Excellent. Well, not excellent, obviously. Incredibly painful and unfortunate, but, you know, that's life. Um, so, as you uh, as you stumble along in the, uh, the inevitable dying of the day, you, uh, you once again, you know, uh, you know, oh, I can't even recall what point of the day it was. Well, that's something I really should have recap listened to. Anyway, I remember you spent several hours running through some bogs, so hey. Uh, we shall say that it, it, the light is dimming. Not dark yet, but sort of, you know, late afternoon. Um, and you can see haze on the horizon. You know, there's a pile of smoke coming off from Ooze Town. And you can see there is still clearly fire underneath it in places. You, know, you get that you know, the, uh, back, you know, orange backscatter light off the smoke. And it's uh, quite clear that whatever's happening over in Ooze Town is... Is not great. You know, there's a, a considerable amount of damage, and there's clearly fire still burning. Um, what are you guys doing? You know, you're hobbling along a road. Are you just going to, you know, push forward? Are you going to find somewhere to heal up and take stock? Are you going to hide because there might be more crudders coming after you? Um. If it looks like there's somewhere that we can feasibly stop and shelter, maybe start a fire, um, that'd probably be quite appreciated now, just to to recover, even momentarily. So you're looking for somewhere to start a fire? But somewhere sheltered, that we can potentially have a fire as well. Okay. Uh, are you are you making the others aware of this, or is this just what you're, you know, what's in the back of your mind as you wander along this? That this is just something that sort of Zeke is trying to as actively as possible do, but like we'll only mention it after he's found somewhere suitable. That oh, by the way, if Timmy's not doing so well, we should probably settle down at least for a little while. So, what do the other two think? It seems that Zeke is, uh, you know, probably ambling ahead slightly, you know, scouting out, you know, places to sort of 
you know, sit out of the wind. What are the other two uh, doing? One of you is probably not doing an awful lot more than just walking at this point. <laughs> What's Anita doing? Anita is stomping along, muttering under her breath about the fact that she's got no nothing to drink because she had to dump it out to make that stupid raft that if people hadn't been such idiots, she wouldn't have needed. But, you know, if someone hadn't blown up at least two or maybe three of the hovercrafts, we could be going a lot quicker right now. And if someone hadn't pissed off the captain, we could still be on that bloody boat. And that's basically what she's doing under her breath whilst begrudgingly supporting Timmy. <laughs> she's not offered to do anything other than help Timmy walk. Fair enough. <laughs> so, Timmy, there you are, dangling off your friend as she. Well, it. <laughs> Under the breath it doesn't really come into it when you're hanging on to someone. So sh your friend is basically cussing you out as, as you cling to them, as they help you walk. You know, you've you've been through a lot in the last few weeks together. You know, you've most of you are. Well, <laughs> Pretty much all of you have, have suffered significant wounds and together through cooperation got through it, healed yourselves and, you know, but let's face it, it's been a lot of injuries over a few weeks. You guys are all wearing down a bit now. Um, I think, I wouldn't have thought Timmy would, would hear what Anita is actually saying, but I think she's going to get the gist. Mm. Um, and um, from having not seen Anita quite as, as irritable as this, although, you know, it, with, without beer is you know, prone to a few grumbles, um, she's just going to accept her fate. <laughs> <laughs> and just keep walking um, a bit like a small child that knows that they've pissed their parents off just one too many times and they just shut up now <laughs> uh, yes the, uh, yes that that sort of you know that light footed trudge with the with the you know the chin on the chest <laughs> just being small and being quiet <laughs> yes i recall it well um so yeah, so, so you're trudging along uh, towards Oostown. Um, as you trudge along this road, I mean, the, the road is quite significantly broken up and naff, but it's navigable, you know. Yeah. There is essentially a hill, sort of, a, a sort of an escarpment, you know, a heavily wooded escarpment at one point, uh, going up from one side, and on the other is just like a mud, mud and, and reeds and grass and filthy water uh, so there's not really uh, you know, much to see or anywhere else to go as you as you follow the road for maybe about sort of 45 minutes you know, maybe coming up on an hour with Timmy's uh, sort of a weight dragging on Anita who was never the most athletic to start with and uh as you come to the end of this, you notice. Screw it. Let's screw the distances a little bit. Uh, you notice that there's um, what was. What's uh, was once a small mound. The road seems to go around it on both sides, uh, and uh, there's a. Uh, it is a slight. Uh, it raises up slightly, and it's sort of flat topped. And someone at some point has clearly tried to seed this with something. And there's some, you know some old withered crops on top of it. But, you know, you know, someone's tried to sneak out of town, going like, oh, yeah, if I can plant this close, but over on this side, you know, no one's going to come this way. But it hasn't taken. And a short distance beyond that, there is an old building that's 
the win it, 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 it at one point probably would have had a lot of windows but they're all smashed and all gone now and it As you come along the the ruined road, the left side of the build this building is basically in the mud of the of the, sort of the swampy estuary, uh, whereas the right side stands on on some concrete that holds it out. It looks like it's dry in there. Um, that that being the case, I think it's possibly. Quietly as possible, creep towards, uh, creep towards, and have a, a peek through the windows, with the lower broken window holes, to to see if there appears to be any signs of like habitation or people there, or a uh, raja den. Right. Well, yeah, as you uh, as you wander along, uh, you, it strikes you as a little odd that there are no creatures here. Um, because it seems to be such a good place initially um, I mean, you can hear gulls around uh, you can hear there are animals off in the grasses but this building as dry and as intact as it seems it doesn't appear to have any like obvious you know tracks in or out of it or you know feces you know, caked around the outside of it or anything like that to demonstrate that something was in there. Okay. Uh, if you want to go and have a proper look, you know what you need to do. Yes, uh, I think I will... Uh, we'll, we'll take that better look. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You uh you poke your head in through a through a window um, and you find what appears to be um, something a bit like a kitchen. It looks a bit like the mess in the salty ships. Now there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sort of like brushed steel and uh, that's you know gone a bit to. Yeah, you've got to seed a bit, but you know, lots of uh, sort of brushed metal and and cabinets, and things like that. And there doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be very terribly disturbed. It looks like it looks like almost people have purposefully left this building alone. I mean, these things could have been scavenged. They, you know, metal is a useful material. Okay. Um, uh, I think seeing all this is equal sort of call over to uh, Timmy and Anita saying found something here but not sure not sure it's, it's a bit weird it's, it doesn't look like it's been touched in a long while, something as, as decent as this. Um, do you want to make the stop or, or not? Could do with rest. Um, probably a good idea. Don't really want to be out in the dark. Um, rest would be good. And Anita is going to just guide Timmy towards this place and dump her in a corner. <laughs> okay. Um, we've established that Anita... Uh, in her previous life as a human before the desolation, uh, lived on the south coast. Yes. And as such, uh, presumably travelled slightly. Yeah. Um, and as you draw closer to this place, um, give me um, give me a knowledge. Um. 
17. 17, Jesus. Okay. As you, as you draw close to this place, something in the back of your head just starts to, like, tickle. There's... You, you recognise this place slightly. Um... Maybe not this one, but places like this. Um, something about it just... You're not sure why, but you don't like it very much. Like, it's not a revulsion as such. Just like, ugh, here. And uh, as you walk around the building, um, there is... There's a window that starts at about waist height, and the words that come through your mind are drive through. And then you come to a door, which has no has no panes in it. You can just stroll on in. And as you okay. do, you are you're confronted by god awful bright coloured plastic furniture. You know. If scavengers had come near this building, this would definitely be gone. I mean, these things might be bolted to the floor, but they're perfectly functional, if ridiculous and garish. And as you walk in, you uh, you look you look across the room, and on the wall, it says in big. I believe the letters are white now, on a green background. It has Onals. <laughs> uh, Anita's going to look around, just go, this place looks familiar. I can just, there's just something in the back of my head. It's, um, yeah. Well, the fact it's not been scavenged is worrying, but you know, whatever. And she sits Timmy in a chair. Yeah. Okay. As you as you plot Timmy down in a chair, and you continue to look over at the sign, this you know there's something here. You know, what is it? What is it? And and you get like one of those phantom smells. Or you remember smelling of there's a smell you associate with a place, and you associate <laughs> crap coffee with this place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this you. you you, you you have like a, a flash of memory of of a colleague buying you some rubbish coffee on a long road trip. Yeah, all I can say is don't drink the coffee. Um, there might be some food here. It may still be good. And she's going to wander behind any counter that's still there and start rummaging through the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're wandering around the counter. Uh, Zeke, you were, you were scouting this building through, through one of the windows towards the back. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, did you wander around with these, these two or did you climb in through the window you were looking through? I think as these two sort of came round, Zeke would have followed and gone in the front. Okay. Um, and we'll now sort of be searching around for anything that's wooden and burnable. Okay. Uh, there is no wood here. This is not a natural wood sort of <laughs> sort of deal in here. Um, there's something. There, there's some panels on the wall, like some slats that go across that you think are wood briefly, uh, but as you go over and touch them, they're like cold. In a way that tells you that they're made of plastic. And as you kind of pull one, it it it, you know, it snaps. It's brittle, and you can see it's it's like hollow, like injection molded plastic. You're like, hmm. You can burn it if you want. <laughs> no, but I, I'm sure, sort of, on a bit more investigation, Zeke may find cardboard boxes, perhaps. It's always a possibility. Um, Would you like me to perceptize that? Oh, I believe you and you and Anita are both uh, heading behind uh, the counter into the back areas anyway. So, 
I should let you both head on in there and I'll tell you what you see. Uh, once again, you see the uh, the kitchen, you know, lots of brushed metal. It's starting to like show rust in patches. Um, and you do uh, see in the corner uh, some old flat, like flattened boxes. Uh, clearly whatever was in them has been taken out. And uh, next to it there is a very large, sort of thick door with a with an odd sort of lever style handle. Um, yeah, I think the the first reaction is to to gather up the uh, the cardboard first and take it into the, the main area, fairly close to where Timmy is, um, and sort of set it up to burn as slowly as possible. So you're gonna go and set a fire. Okay, Anita, you are now standing alone in a what was probably meant to be stainless steel kitchen, but clearly was done on the cheap, <laughs> uh, showing <laughs> showing spots of rust. Um, eh, what are you gonna do? It hasn't been polished in eighty-seven years. Um, so you are you're standing here. You know, Zeke's just wandered off with some cardboard boxes. You're seeing what to your eyes is clearly a chiller door. Yeah, this I'm is a cold room. going to open it up and see what's in there. Okay. You never know, it might still have power and there might be some food in there. As and if it hasn't were... got power, there might be food in there. Yeah. As you open the door, um, the, first, the first thing that strikes you is that inside it's actually slightly warmer. Um, than it is outside. That seems wrong. And and then there's like a rush of just sort of stench. Uh, but after that disperses, uh, you see on the back wall of this room, uh, the side walls there, oh god, lots of uh, assorted rotten filth. You know, bags of sort of semi-liquid filth. The various shades, you know, some of which have burst under their own putrefaction. But at the far wall, uh, there are some flat, like plastic, uh, almost like bags, with some round, flat, brown objects in. They've just been clearly like sandwiched between two layers of plastic. And they look fine. Do they look vaguely familiar to Anita by any chance? Um, I mean, I mean, you've eaten a rat burger. You, yeah, you, know, you know what a burger looks like. You know, it looks like it looks like meat. Yeah, admittedly, possibly minced meat, but meat <laughs> of some kind. She is gonna pick them up, sniff at them shrug a bit and take them out to the others and go found some food yeah, yeah. she's not going to mention the state of everything else around it yeah, yeah you you pick up the the sealed laminated plastic container plastic like sheets and you sniff the sealed laminated plastic sheet it smells like very little because you're a rotter um <laughs> Which says something about the strength of the previous stench. Um, yeah. You walk back outside with these. Um, so yeah, you're on the, on your way back. Uh, Timmy, uh, you're sitting there at this horrible bright green uh, t chair and table. It's uh, one of those naff round tables. It's not really big enough to put anything on. But they put like the four tall chairs around um, that are slightly too small for anyone who's human um, and don't have arms, so you fall out of them. <laughs> uh, I don't wish to sound bitter, um, but <laughs> as you sit there, you know, sort of, you're 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 a little out of it. You know, you've been up for quite a while. There's a lot of pain going on. You know, you've just been dragged on a forced march for about an hour and as you're sitting there just there's, there's a wave of stench it doesn't last very long 
but it's a very powerful smell. And if you were to put a finger on it, you would say rotten corpses. Um, and then it's gone. It appears that whatever was keeping this bottled up has sort of been released, and just this vile gust bursts through, sort of thing, before it disperses on the wind. Um, Zeke, you're currently on the floor with your like your face in cardboard, trying to you know set fire to things. <laughs> You've got a cardboard <laughs> smoke in your face as you blow into like you know the beginning of a fire. Yeah. Maybe you're sizing up whether to chuck some of that plastic on. You have seen plastic burn. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you're considering whether or not to burn your clothes and run away naked into the hills. Mm. Uh, I can't say, but you know, no one would blame you at this point. Um... <laughs> So yeah, you have a fire, you have stench, and shortly afterwards you have Anita with... Oh, how many of these packs do you grab, Anita? A couple. Okay. Anita comes out with three, four. Uh, these things, they're, they're about as wide as a man's chest, and probably square. So, it's probably about Probably about 36 flat brown things in this space. You know, carefully tessellated. Not as to waste any space. Because, you know, that would be inefficient. So it comes out with approximately somewhere in the region of like 150 of these pressed meat things. Yeah, sealed in plastic. There you are. Um, they look awfully fresh for something that smelled like I'd killed it. Um, where did they come from? Yeah, and at back in the kitchen. Don't worry, these things last for centuries. <laughs> what are they? They look like burgers. They, they are, are burgers. Like rat burgers? Mm, potentially. They're probably edible. I think they smell all right. Would Timmy be able to smell anything from these? Not while they're still sealed in plastic. Okay, so um, Timmy's going to take one carefully um, and kind of peel open the corner of the plastic and sniff very, very gently, just in case. Okay. That smell comes back. Uh, yeah, you um, you rip it open, and the um, the smell you get. It's like nothing you've experienced in your life. It's, it's sort of it's rich and slightly sweet and sort of herby. Um. It's it it smells pretty good. I mean, nothing a little cooking wouldn't solve, but. But it smells nice. Um. Yeah. It, you, and once you once you do open this, this smell starts to spread. Um, if Zeke was to put not to put too fine a point, on it, Zeke smells this and associates it with Lincolnshire, or the place <laughs> his father said was called Lincolnshire. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, what have you got over there, Timmy? It's, uh, it's in them packs. It looks like uh, Anita's found some food. It smells all right. Well, uh, What's the th 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 this fire is just about going. We can just take a couple uh, over it and see what, see what comes out the other side. Certainly worth giving it a go. Can't be worse than tack. And did, did 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 going through the kitchen area, we notice sort of any sort of metal utensils that had been undisturbed. Yeah, 
I'm going to say that for some reason that completely eludes you, there are quite a lot of like um, like flat metal spatulas. Yeah. They're the kinds that you might use on like a flat top griddle. Okay. Um, yeah, so you could go and grab a couple of those and uh, array them around the edge of the fire and place uh, one of these patties onto each. Okay, there. For the sake of rapid abstraction, give me a craft roll. Well, this can't go wrong. Dirty 12. Dirty 12. Excellent. You managed to, yeah, you, you rig like these large, like, spatula style objects um, up. You managed to, like, you lash them to the, the, the um, to one of the chairs so they're, like, they're suspended a little way up. And you stand back and, you know, put your hands on your hips and you're looking awfully proud of yourself when the first one of these patties just starts sliding under its own grease and falls in the fire. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, but yeah, eventually you manage to get, you manage to start cooking, and it starts working. You, know, you have to sort of adjust angles a bit. In the end, you sort of you get to three, you get one flat and two sort of slightly angled against it, so they they, they slide down into the middle. Uh, but yeah, you know, it works, and it turns out that basically now you've opened this package, like they're all unsealed. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to presume, I mean, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, the general sort of lad logic works of, oh, well, the pack of sausages is open, I might as well use them all. Yeah. <laughs> There's no sense letting good food go to waste. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've, you've got, like, 90-odd still sealed. Mm-hmm. So, 34 is no big loss. Yeah. You start cooking them, I mean, well, yeah, if you overcook them a bit, they dry out, it's fine. Um... So gradually, yeah, the, uh, so, you know, the the particularly overcooked ones may get chucked to to Jerry over in the corner, or sat on one of the tables. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And while you're doing all this, Jerry, uh, Jerry hops off into the kitchen. And he comes back just smelling awful, and a bit slimy, but very happy. Yeah. Big old smiles on Jerry's face. He messily devours any sausage, any bits of like this this patty thing that falls close enough to him. Um, so yeah, you 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 cook up, you cook up a, a huge array of meat. In the form of you can array it, not that there's many or different types. Um, <laughs> and you end up with sort of one of you ends up with fifth, with like eleven, and the other two end up with twelve. <laughs> you can do whatever you wish with them, but yeah, you have like a dozen of these herby meat patties to do with as you will. They are magically delicious. <laughs> I need to eat a couple. Something then, in the simple act of eating them just makes you feel better. It's like it's like it's like a warm hug in your mouth. <laughs> Even though you're a rotter and you know that you can't really taste things very well, it, it's still very very nice. Is it a bit nostalgic by any chance? Mm. Quite possibly. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna eat a couple and then go investigate this place a bit more because she's a bit concerned that nothing's been taken. Mm. Okay. So you're heading out off from the uh, the breakfast to go and uh, or the dinner, depending on what you want to do, supper. You head off from the meal to go and investigate. What are the other two are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, cooked flat meat patties. I assume you're messily devouring them. Uh, I think probably Timmy is going to be eating a few of these um, to try and build some strength up um, and then probably start looking around for at least something she could use as a bandage for the hole in her hip. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So you're going to look at look after a bandage. What's Zeke going to do? Um, Zeke being having sort of discovered previously on his journey south that found meat is not always the best meat. Wait for the other two to to at least had something, and seeing no effects, we will um, we will talk in. <laughs> um, uh, and then sort of follow that up by trying to assess whether the the sort of any closed in rooms that would be decent to to get arrested in that don't reek of rot. I'm in awe in the pu- the, the, the pure Zeekness of, of, of that. <laughs> I'm going to put it to the other two players. Do we think we should give him a legendary point for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's if I decided to spring a spring an encounter on you, he wouldn't have eaten. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you get an extra legendary point for that for being a paranoid nut job. <laughs> <laughs> and not eating until the other your, your friends have. So yes. Uh, so yeah, and you, you head off to the kitchen and send into the back to find out why people haven't been here. Uh, should deal with that in a moment. So Zeke, you're eating. So Timmy, you uh, decide to stumble off to try and find something to staunch your bleeding. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, there are in the room you're in. There are three doors off to the left, sort of directly across from the, the entrance door. Mm-hmm. Off to the right, you have the 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 the, the counter and the entrance to the kitchens. Um, these doors have little placards on with pictures of people, um, but. But they've been defaced to the point where you can't make out the shapes of the people anymore. Uh, I mean, this is clearly this is clearly done even before desolation. Uh, you know, this is pre-desolation graffiti. Um. So these pictures have got like recognition. Not recognisable faces, but at least recognisable features. Um, they seem to be very, very basic. Um, uh, one appears, one appears to be just a very basic stick figure. Um, uh, but it's been defaced with some sort of thick white material uh, to have a large and impressive moustache. And what appears to be a crudely drawn phallus. Um, <laughs> uh, the one next to it appears to be almost identical, uh, but appears appears to be um, appears to be crude, like very weirdly deformed around the hips, uh, very broad on the hips, um, and it appears to be carrying two large round objects. <laughs> Uh, against its chest, and someone appears to st- like someone appears to just scribbled lots of lines around the head, for no reason you can readily discern. Um, uh, the third one is of it, it appears to be someone just sitting down on a white box. It's just whatever white material has been used, they've just coloured in this whole thing, and there's a white person, the person just sitting on a white box. Um, From what you can gather, uh, the third room is probably a toilet. You're not entirely sure what the purpose of the other two rooms would be. Okay. Um, based on the phallus that has been drawn onto one of them, Timmy is going to deduce that Salties are generally men, and that looks like sort of some of them that she's met. So, or it could be a sword. Who knows? Um, so she's going to head on into that one. 
and her okay. limping. It's a fairy okay. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You uh, you limp on in into the room. The room that it you know to you to your understanding basically means boy, or man, or weapon, or moustache, or men with swords and moustaches. And uh, you come to a room. You come to a room that uh, it's it's curiously at odds with the rest of the place you've seen so far, because this room is filthy. Uh, the floor is damp and rank, and it's tinged with a sort of a, an orangey yellow. Like tint, it seems to pool at the edges. Um, the whole room just reeks. Uh, you can see, you can see. Uh, one, now you've come in, that there are a toilet. There is at least one toilet stall that is recognisable as such uh, from, you know, the rest of your life. You have seen toilet stalls before, um, but it appears that like the door has been kicked in, and someone has broken the toilet, possibly with a hammer. Or maybe with some kind of crude explosive. Um, you know, the, the chunks of porcelain are sitting on the floor nearby. And uh, there is a machine on the wall. Sort of a, a crude metal box of a machine. Uh, that has sort of three buttons. A large slot at the bottom and a, and a small slot at the top. That has like... It has... It has the dents of like repeated blows against the side of the casing. Um. Yeah. Timmy doesn't want her open wound anywhere near this this room. Um, and is going to leave immediately, if not sooner. Um. She she's just reminded herself um of what she always knew along that that. These these men were disgusting, um, <laughs> and shouldn't be allowed their own room. Um, so um, leaves um, and heads towards the one that's holding um, the strange beach balls. Okay, yep. Yeah. You, you head into the the room, the person who's holding the strange beach balls, and uh, this one's much more in keeping with the building so far. Um, it's. It's fairly clean in here. Um, there are more toilet stalls. Most of them seem to be in working order. Uh, the door... One of the doors is hanging off slightly on one of them. Uh, there's a mirror that's mostly intact. For some reason it seems to have like lip marks on it in one corner. God knows why. Uh, this... This room actually has a very similar machine on the wall, on the right, as you go through. Um, but there... If anything, the uh, the dents in this one are larger. As if whoever whoever was beating this machine was angrier. Or more insistent. Um, but apart from that, uh, this room seems to be very much in keeping with the rest of it, it's fairly clean, it's fairly untouched. You know, and as you come in, you even discover that in the toilet stalls, hanging from strange white metal boxes, seems to be a slightly yellowed but very absorbent looking trail of paper. Um, keeping an eye on that Paper. This this machine that has been hit with far more aggression. Does it appear to have anything in it? Um. Without investigating it, you there'd be no way of knowing, really. Um. Okay. So could I argue a perception? Yeah. No. No, I could not. No. Mm. God's sake. Okay. <laughs> Done as it far again. As you can, okay. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm not re-rolling. I'm not using. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, <laughs> Legendary you, you, point to look at that. Yeah. You have a good look at this machine. Um, yeah. You're pretty sure that this machine has been beaten to within an inch of its life. Um, there's not much point investigating it any further. You know, as you as you look, uh, one of the corners of the machine starts to pull slightly away from the wall. Uh, as the tile behind it cracks, um, yeah, it, this machine looks utterly, utterly ru <laughs> ruined. If there was anything okay. in it, it probably would have fallen out by now. Fair enough. In which case, she is going to resort to the slightly yellow paper stuff um, mm. and grab as much of that as possible and take it back to her exciting green plastic chair. <laughs> As you as as you pull the paper, um, the the box it seems to be spooling out from uh, opens in the way that things do in some cheaper establishments, and uh, and swings outwards, and you just see there's there's two big rolls side by side of this slightly yellowed paper. You could just yoink yep. them both if you wish. Yeah, I'm gonna yoink yoink both of them. They're both coming with me. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you walk out of the toilets at Ornals with two rolls of toilet paper and a new <laughs> and a shiny new sense of disrespect towards and loving males. Um, <laughs> so yes, have that. We have Zeke having just finished eating and starting to wonder about I can't remember what you were going to do. Uh, uh, Zeke was in uh, in search of somewhere uh, a bit more sheltered. a bit more defensible. Yeah. Or, or sheltered Structure. or just or, or defensible, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, perhaps a, a room that though we wouldn't be able to read it, red staff, staff only across the front. I will assume that will carry you in the same direction that Anita's already gone in. So we shall go back to Anita. <laughs> so, Anita, you wandered back into the kitchen. What are you looking mm -hmm. for this time? I am trying to see if there are any signs as to why this place hasn't been looted. Hmm. Well, well, what kind of signs do you think those would be? Mm, potentially... Signs of big dangerous animals or okay, any well, gang signs or anything like that that might indicate that someone's claimed this building. Good thought. So, so how would you be looking to ascertain this information? Would you just be looking or would you be like... You know, would you be considering things that you've helped from your own experience? Like, where would I look for this? Yeah, she would definitely be drawing on her her knowledge that she's accrued over the past few years. Yeah. Okay, Dane. So, yeah, you're drawing on your knowledge as to where to look for things. Um, 14. So yeah, on, on a 14, uh, looking for gang signs, because oh, we're just oh so very ganged up. Um, <laughs> yeah, you uh, you look for some places where you know people might people might put gang signs, or you know people might put like hobo signs, you know, you know like warn people off of a place, yeah. anything like that. Um, it doesn't seem to be anything. Um, if anything, it looks like either at, on the day of desolation or maybe even before people just left this place hmm. yeah, it looks like you know possibly in the face of everything else that was going wrong people decided they had something better to do than be here yeah. fair enough in that case she's going to have a quick look to see if there's any alcohol in this place and then head back to the others <laughs> She's missing the comfort of a nice pint in a bar. Yeah. With okay. some 
possibly so, mates. If you're looking for booze, are you going to start opening cupboards then? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> you start opening cupboards. Uh, at this point, Zeke strolls in. Um, he's you know covered in covered in pork grease, um, you know, looking for something to wash it down with and somewhere to sleep. Um, and at this point, you find. Next to a rather odd machine with lots of nozzles on it that you don't fully understand. Um, you have odd vision. You have odd memories of someone using one of these. You know, glimpsed through a window once, but you have no idea how it works. Um, you find, you find like a, 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 a an o- I want to say opaque plastic. It's not quite sort of a a very dense translucent bag of something very dark. And clearly fluid. Uh, it has a sort of a tap on the bag. It's clearly meant to be put in something. Um, but it's clearly a liquid. And this place appears to be a kitchen. So it would follow that liquids here are meant for consumption. She's going to have a look round for something to put some of this liquid in, and she's going to give it a taste. Um, just thinking how scathing to be. Um, <laughs> oh, that's it. You see a, you see a, a plastic cup. Um which uh, at one point was clearly branded, but the branding seems to have worn off slightly in the sun because it's been next to a window, uh, full of full of horrifically rotted paper straws. Uh, you could easily just dump those out. Have yeah. Up. Uh, Picks that up, kind of looks at it, dumps it out, gives it a quick wipe round, <laughs> as you do. Yep. Sticks it on the side and sees if she can get any of this liquid out of this bag. It's got a, a little like turn tap on it with a little yep. a- aperture. So, yeah, yep. like like a philistine uh, ravaging a box a, a box of wine that's not in a box anymore. Mm-hmm. You, you turn the tap, and this deep dark brown, almost syrupy substance, sort of slowly squelches its way into the bottom of the cup it, it you know it 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 builds up in a little like you know a little like whipping whipped puddle but, you know, it takes a little while to settle down into a into like a flat <laughs> into a you know, a flat gel she's gonna just load it shrug and She's had worse stuff in the cup. You you shrug, you tip the cup up. You tip the cup up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's getting close. Uh, And you put it to your tongue. Um, It tastes like childhood. Um, it It is sweet. It's ever so very slightly acrid. Um... But mainly, it's just unbearably sweet. Um, it has a rich, well, at this point, you're drinking it in syrup form, so it has an almost unbearably rich caramel flavour. Um, and you can feel your tongue and the inside of your mouth, um, like starting to almost sizzle. Um, uh, you. After a few seconds, it starts to hurt. Um, but this stuff is quite sticky. <laughs> so in your inside of your, your lower lip, it's on your tongue, it's under your tongue. It's it's not yet got to the back of your mouth yet. It's that thick. But it tastes of childhood, and you can actually taste it. Yeah. Oh God, this is incredibly strong <laughs> flavour. Um, <laughs> You get the impression this is probably meant to be diluted many times. Uh, yeah, homeopathy be damned. You're having, you know, completely <laughs> undiluted. 
she kind of stops for a bit and looks around to see if there's anything she can mix it with. Double checks to see if she's got a water bottle on her, which I don't think she does because she may have used it in a raft and not put it back. Yes. So, as you stand there looking around, like anyone who's like left mouthwash in their mouth too long, um, <laughs> you can definitely feel the inside of your mouth starting to burn and tingle. Um, <laughs> Ooh, feeling mm. bonus. Yeah, um, in a quite uncomfortable manner. Um, you can almost feel your teeth crying. Um, <laughs> what little teeth I have left. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, somewhere, you know, a genetic memory of having gone to a dentist screams <laughs> out and his voice is forever silenced. Um, <laughs> but yes. You uh, stand there savouring uh, savouring the rotter's treat of the dying Kalar. Yes. But yeah. She is going to squirrel that away somewhere if she can't find anything to dilute it with now, but she's definitely taking that with her. <laughs> All right. Do you if have anything, it could be worth something. Any levels of suffering or exhaustion? No. Good. Good, good, good. That means, for the sake of argument, you gain... Oh, Christ, I can't do that. You gain <laughs> four legendary points. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You've just drunk something that reminds you of your previous life and is potentially deadly to humans. <laughs> Huzzah. It tastes amazing. It, it's hurting you quite badly, uh, but it tastes great. Uh, Zeke, as you stand there watching uh, Anita drink this, uh, you can actually see like the flesh of her lower jaw starting to like sizzle and run. Um, <laughs> as like a huge, beautific smile spreads across her face and her pupils like open up. <laughs> Oh my god, sugar rush. Yeah. Like, she hasn't had one of those for a few years. Exactly. <laughs> Wherever Anita has gone, it is a good place. Um, and it looks very enjoyable. You're muted. Zeke will wander over and go, so um, what, what have you found there? So, um... It's mine. <laughs> 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 oh god okay um, does he could give the the cuff the, the cup that had this in sort of a a, a smell and go mind the, 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 this is familiar i think this is the the, the dying collar we, we've got that back up north it's still mine you're not having it Not a fan. No, not not a fan of any decent hybrids that's been down here. So, uh... yes, it is as you say. It is most definitely the dying Kalar, um, the uh, the lesser, the, the lesser but far more deadly version of of of, uh, of, of the famous pre desolation drink Kalar. Uh, <laughs> that apparently is part of the doom that. That destroyed the old world um, yeah, from Atlanta to Apocalypse. Uh, but yes, you know you're, you know well enough to not touch this stuff. But yes, as we stand there, we uh, we see Anita. So far, our, our moral guidepost, our uh, our mum of the group, if you will, sinking into the depths of addiction. <laughs> uh, Zika, you you find the door to the you know, the room of staff. <laughs> so you can look at the, the the lettering on the door. Go and <laughs> sort, of, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sort of swing it open to to have a look if it's not locked. 
you walk over and you push the door. It's not locked. It's just. It almost it's almost one of those doors that doesn't lock. It just swings both ways. Uh, and sort of have a poke around to see um, see if this room's any more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, um, or any less garish. Uh, this room is. Uh, this room is less garish. Um, in that it's almost entirely unfurnished. Um, three of the four walls are taken up with lockers. Uh, there is a small plastic bench in the middle of the room uh, that's just wide enough for a person to sit on, despite having the, the slats segmented to appear to be two rows. Um, and there is a light bulb. And on one wall there is a very, very badly rotted cork board. Okay. Um, if I were to, to say I wanted to go through the lockers to see whether there's anything worthwhile in there, um, I, I would say I'd let's roll perception if possible. Fourteen. Um, you find an array of uh, of different sized um, shirts. Um, I can't remember what color the, the current branding for Onald's is. So brown and mustard yellow. Uh, some kind of horrible mix of of, of, of disgusting, clashy colors. Um, but yeah, you you find this thing. Um, you know. With the famous symbol on it, and uh, and you you deduce this must have been a uniform of some kind. Uh, if they don't smell too like terribly unwashed, as in out of old bodies, Zeke will go and add them to the fire. Okay. <laughs> uh, as like additional fuel, considering the. More than likely cotton rather than polyester. Mm. You think, given the fact that, um, given the fact that they're working around hot objects, yeah, and cotton will burn rather than melt to your flesh. Yeah, you think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you you gather up these uh, you, you gather up these rather unsightly um. Screw it. Let, 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 let's roll with the theme. A rather unsightly, like mustard yellow. Um, like tops, and like standard like black work trousers. All of them, all of them are, ha are made of a fabric that seems to be sort of very light and stretchy and shiny in some way. That's slightly uncomfortable to touch. Um, as you uh, as you walk with an armload of these things back, uh, wearing the stupid hat, um, <laughs> because hell. Yeah. You had to find one that was your size, um, and you chuck it on the fire. Um, they just smother the fire, and uh, for a few and and for a few moments, you just sort of think, "Shit, um, <laughs> it's getting darker. It's getting colder. Just smothered the goddamn fire." Mm. Uh, and then, like horrible brownish. Smoke starts to emerge from the sides of the pile, and a really unhealthy-looking flame <laughs> uh, that occasionally sparks with odd colours uh, rises out of the pile, uh, unleashing a smell—a smell that somewhere it's kind of like aerosolized adolescent sweat that's been rotting in a locker, locker for eighty years. Um, <laughs> So, you know, not great. <laughs> but the warmth spreads you know, quite nicely through the through the immediate area as these things you know, slowly turn into a sort of pool of burning semi fluid. So there you are. You are. 
Screw it. We're going with that one. You you spend the evening without incident in this place, eating your uh, eating your miraculous meat patties. You explore the third room, uh, and you find a you find a perfectly defensible room that locks from the inside, uh, with a with a very odd shaped seat in it, and a fa- and a fold down bed <laughs> that doesn't seem to take anyone's weight very easily. Um, it's now Jerry's bed. <laughs> I, I prefer the, after after Zeke. I, after Zeke and Timmy both try to use it, Anita ends up on it because she's the only one that doesn't start to like pull away from the wall with. <laughs> uh, Jerry climbs up one of the many ropes that seems to be hanging from the ceiling. Um, yeah. And yeah, you all manage to get, you know, a good night's sleep. You know, full bellies in a, in a relatively safe place. I mean, of course, once you lock the door, it's incredibly dark, but, you know, that's the trade-off for safety. So, yes. And when you wake the next day, um, yeah, you all feel that characteristic feeling of someone who, you know, stayed up too late, drank something stupid, and ate lots of meat. <laughs> so you all basically wake up with kebab mouth. Um <laughs> But delicious Herbie kebab mouth. <laughs> and when you unlock the door, uh, you can now see that most of the fires over in Oostown are out. And the smoke is still sort of spreading slowly. So, uh, what are you guys doing? You have the morning, you have your breakfast. Anita has something horrible to drink. <laughs> Yeah, uh, still going. No. Okay. In a word, no. The, the the fire burned out many hours ago. The other side of a locked door. <laughs> One uh, of the I tables think... appears to have sort of slumped into it. <laughs> I think Anita's feeling a bit <clears throat> better about the world now that she's been reminded of her childhood and everything. And she's going to have a look at Timmy and see if there's anything she can do to help her. She's not very happy about it, but she's going to. She feels she really ought to. Thank you, That is 13. Yeah, um, 13, you... uh... He says that the the wound isn't actually as serious as it looks. Um, and it's very painful, uh, but it seems to have you know it, it hasn't hit any bones. <laughs> you know, it hasn't broken anything or fractured anything. It's just it's just ripped a decent sized chunk, sort of off of the fleshy part of the outer thigh, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't nice, but. You know, compared to say, like you know, a, a, a complex compound fracture of the of the upper thigh and a dislocated hip, is absolute doddle. So, <laughs> you know, you uh, you pack the toilet roll against it, and uh, you manage to find you manage to find a uh, an unattended fleece that was on the back of the staff room door, and you uh, you tie that around it. Mm-hmm. You know, to hold it on, and uh, you're pretty sure that will do. You can roll your standard healing die on that one. Uh, that is. What is that? I can't remember. How many ranks you got? Uh, three. D ten. D ten. Nine. That's always good. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So yes. Thank you. Timmy feeling lots better. Uh, yeah. No, 
obviously that's the benefit of a good meal and a night's sleep as well. You know, bizarre. So, there you are. You're all feeling a lot more human, apart from those of you who aren't. Um, you've got breakfast. You've got, you know, you, you, you've got drink syrup. Um, but, you know, the two human members of the group are a little short of something to drink. Um, Timmy's going to wander back towards the kitchen, um, partially in search of something to drink. Um, that kebab mouth is not it. Um, but also um, to see if she can investigate where that god awful smell came from. Okay. Um... Did you close the, the, the cold store last night? Or did you just leave it open? No, she would have automatically closed it behind her. Okay, day. Um, yeah. So, to me, immediately upon entering the kitchen, um, you can see, um, like, horrible, gunky footprints coming out of this sealed door. It's got, like, a, a lever open that you pull. Um... It looks a bit like the cold stores on some of the larger ships you've been on. But they're horrible, gunky footprints. Well, yeah. Because they need to track horrible gunk out with her. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any other bags of liquidy type stuff back here um not in the kitchen proper no okay in which case if there are no bags of sugar liquid um she is probably going to have a look inside the gooey cold store uh, yes. so you pop into the cold store um and yeah once again you're you're assaulted with, with a lesser version of the gust of filth that came out last time um, yeah, it's only been bottled up for another few hours before he opened again. Um, but yeah, you find sort of, you know, you find bags of like liquefied potato mess and, uh, you know, things like that, you know, you know boxes of, boxes of like putrefied moldy bread product. Okay. And as you dig through this, Actually, as you dig through this, um, you find a small package, sort of, you know, um, about the size of an A4 piece of paper. Um, it's probably about five inches tall. Um, size, so base width about A4 piece of paper. I can't remember what dimensions that are exactly. You know, foot by eight inches, maybe something like that. Um. And it's wrapped in plastic. It's been underneath something that's been draining filth onto it for decades. It's all sort of... It's all caked in something vaguely mouldy and starchy. But it appears itself to be sealed. Okay. Um, yeah, so Timmy's going to attempt to take that out without touching too much filth. Um, <laughs> sort of juicy filth. Like, oh, like yeah. okay. um, and uh, I'll wander back out with the others to see if we found something else that might be um, either edible or drinkable. Okay. So, you've, you've retrieved something from the cold store. Uh, Zeke, what are you doing? Um, I think Zeke could be sort of going through the, the the cupboards and smaller things behind the till, just to see what was uh, in those. Whether there was any bottles of anything drinkable behind there. Okay. <clears throat> and Anita, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to wander outside to see what I can see of what's happening over in Town. 
So we have Timmy comes back out into the main room. Probably sits down at a chair or a table, maybe. I don't know. Plops this thing down. You've got to work out a way to open this plastic package. Uh, in the meantime, we have Zeke. You're poking around under the counter. You mm -hmm. find you find like an old ice cream tub, um, and inside it, uh, you find little plastic badges with people's names on. And there's like you know, there's Hayden, Caden, Jaden, Aiden. <laughs> LaShawn um, Tyson Shawnee Phil and there's and some of them have like little gold stars underneath some of them don't but of course you're illiterate so none of this means anything to you uh, and I see a few pieces of plastic with some squiggles that mean something to someone else well, I imagine you know what writing looks like. You just can't read. Yeah. So, yeah. You see things with writing on, and some of them have gold stars on. They appear to be attached to little backing strips by magnets. Um, oddly enough, discovering that they're, they're magnetic, as a Zeke sort of starts to bag them, for uh, for extracting the magnets later. Fair enough. <coughs> but apart from that, you don't really no. find anything particularly useful. N nothing, nothing akin to like bottles of water that may have been in a fridge ah. behind the counter. No. No. Bottles of water. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what fast food's like up in the north? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, this water is clean. Uh, <laughs> down here, it's all branded filth. Um, <laughs> so, so yes, Nita, you are outside. You look across at Oostown. It's you actually get to see a view of Oostown you haven't seen before uh, because you've never been this side of the river. Um, well, at least not since the desolation. Uh, you can recall. Um, you get to see the other side of the bridge uh, that leads across to uh, Madame Nucha's. And you get to see across the river to where, um, where, where the bleed is. You get to see the merchant's quarter from the outside as opposed to from uphill from it. And you, you can see you can see a p the perspective on the on the Salty's enclave from the way the a direction you've never witnessed, and most importantly, you can see up to the fort, and you can see there are guns on it now. She's going to run back in and go, uh, "Guys, development, there are guns at the fort now. Might be an issue." Well, we we knew there were. There were guns at the fort. They've, they, them blue coats been wandering around for ages. So, no big guns that I can see from out there. What do you mean big guns? Ain't no one got nothing like that. Uh, they do, and they have. Does so he could wander out and sort of take stock of what Anita's told him and go, hmm? So they do. Um, As you wonder about, yes, you can also see as you look up at the fort, <clears throat> there are large guns, and I mean large in the form of they look tiny from where you are, but you can clearly see there are some sort of large field pieces. <laughs> uh, they might previously have just been pointed out to sea, and now they've been you know, wheeled round to point down at the town. So. Been a, a long way and a, a fair few miles since I've seen, seen something like that. But ones I've seen roll, uh, roll full of stone. Uh, I reckon these ones aren't and may have caused some of those fires last night. 
as you're both standing there looking across the, the river, um, the one thing that you didn't realise immediately is that you haven't seen anyone. You've been looking at the town and you can't see any people. Do you see people over there? Because there should be people. Should be. It's still a bit early though. We can. Um... Not that early. There should be at least people on Madame Hooch's. So... They're available at all hours of the day. It's, uh, it's a bit of a strange one, I will admit, but with them fires, they might be uh, might be trying to put stuff out still. If it's, if it's got right in there, it's not easy once uh, once flame takes a building proper. Yeah, but there were lots of people about last time we saw a building that was burning. Both and both. there is no one this time. Yeah, there were people around the town because, you know, had issues with said people. Are there less ships in the encla in the enclave? Had you asked. Uh, there <laughs> appears to be less enclave. Just outright less enclave. Okay. Yes. Um, can we see the wall that usually that used to screen it, well, last we were there, screened it off from the rest of Ooze Town. Um, look, you see, you're looking at it from the wrong side to really view the wall. The wall's on the inland side. You're looking at it from the river. Um, but mainly what you can see of it uh, is essentially what you left, what you know and love, uh, but with some large holes blown in it. Yeah, the Enclave has at some point either been shelled, bombed, or set on fire. Or both. Or all of those. You actually can't say both of those three things. Yeah, Timmy, we, we best, uh, best go and see what your mates are up to. They uh, seem to have taken a kick in. Yeah, they look like uh, there's less of them. Um, those things at the top there, guns, right? They weren't there before, were they? Uh, don't, don't think so. Um, but back up north, I heard um, someone in the day call them Kayons or something. sound too good um maybe if we like head down towards the town and um have a word if we can find anyone yeah maybe try not to kill them this time can do killing would be bad yeah especially if it was us so um yeah should we um See if we know anyone that could maybe help us. I'm sure that they'll be more willing to help us if they've got guns pointed at them. Um, and we're up for. I didn't mean from us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to that too. But yeah, if, if they've got these bloody great big guns pointed at them, then you know we're we're helping to go and find out how to not have the guns pointed at them, then maybe they might help us get in. Or they've all run away. Or they've all run away and we have to do it on our own anyway. But or, it's worth a try. Or we could run away. Or we could run away. Seek. <laughs> well, why, why are you looking at me? I, I, I ain't never run away from nothing. Hmm. As you stand there barbing Zeke, um, <laughs> you, you see uh, one of the buildings in town uh, that you know to house a shop that you have visited before. Uh, Erica's. Uh, it's 
you know the building you see collapse to house uh, Tom's oddity shop. Uh, you see it collapse in a cloud of like you know, flaming debris. That's Just, not good. The, the several seconds later, we hear what what could ostensibly be uh, a, a thunderous echo of cannon fire. I think we need to go investigate. And uh, I start walking. Yeah, Zeke will dart back and sort of pack the last few cooked pucks away, like wrapped in a little piece of cloth. Um, and with Jerry. Uh, at his shoulder, head down after Anita. Fair enough. What's Timmy doing? Timmy is going to take the weird plastic um, package and just kind of put it under her arm um, and follow Anita. She can open it later. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, and so. You finally, <laughs> finally, um, come back to the bridge into town. Uh, you, you probably recall, um, well, you probably don't, but if your characters would, uh, that this bridge was manned by, um, I believe, by a post gen called Mary. Um, at one point, who uh, also sort of functions as a side gig. As a uh, as a door person for uh, Madame Nooch's, as well as controlling sort of a uh, foot traffic in and out. Wow, that's some good dog sounds. Um, <laughs> quality dogs. Uh, so there we are. Uh, but the bridge is open. Um, it well, the bridge is closed. In fact, it's it it's it hasn't been opened, forming thus a barrier. Uh, so you can just wander straight across, which is unusual because they normally keep you know the bridge impassable, so crowders can't get across. And as you uh, wander into Ooze Town, um, you still don't see anyone. There's no, you know, there's no hawkers out in the street. There's no whores on the prowl. There's, you know. There's no walks of shame going on. You know, there's no street meat sellers. There's nothing. There's just, yeah. you know, there's, there's wreckage. There's the remains of market stalls that have been abandoned. This really doesn't look good. I suppose we should uh, get the, the, the last of these and so you can sort of hold up the, the, the bindle that is his coat, the few clanking jars in. Um, get these to, to, to Morgan and see what's to do about it. And if we... Uh, if we can't do anything more to help the town, well, there's... Uh, there's plenty more places we can go and see. Eh? True. Just going to start heading towards cautiously. The pragmatism of a traveller. <laughs> <laughs> Head cautiously towards the uh, enclave. Okay, yeah. So, are you just going to head you know, straight? down through the merchant quarter to the enclave or are you going to try and you know artfully dodge through the back streets or if there doesn't look like there's anyone about then just straight through yeah yep okay then if you're all agreed that's what you do uh head back down um so you head straight along you you pass madame nooch's on your right you uh turn left and head down there 
there, does anyone appear to be inheriting Madame Nucci's? No. There aren't even any lights. So no sound. There's a uh, there's signs of struggle all around, but no people. This really is not good. As you uh, head into the merchant's quarter, you uh, you come across your first per your first person. Uh, they're they're slumped in the doorway of one of the lesser brothels, um, with their face beaten almost all the way off. Are quite resolutely dead. Um, you know, they appear to have been done in with some kind of blunt object, and in great malice. Tony's going to point to it and just go, "That wasn't me." <laughs> well, d don't know about you two ladies, but I am one for sticking around to find out who who it was. What did that? So. Maybe a, a bit of a quicker pace, shall we? Absolutely. Onwards. Yeah. So yeah, you uh, you skirt around the uh, the wreckage of, of Tom's oddity shop towards the uh, the main market. Have any of the oddities sort of survived and rolled out of the shop from sort of the big canopy that it had out from? <laughs> um, there is an old tin bath. Uh, there is. There's an old tin bath. There is a a perfectly a per <laughs> a perfect and unmarred set of porcelain buttocks. Um, there is a mannequin's head uh, with no face, and there is a there is a genuine patent Victorian vi uh, virility enhancing electrically operated belt. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, th that's been rigged to a backpack with a car battery in. But the car battery seems to have leaked all over the place. So, yeah. Um, there are an array of wonders, uh, none of which <laughs> seem to be of any immediate utility. Uh, as you uh, head through the market, um, you stumble upon more severely battered people um, almost all of which have been dead for some time uh, some unfortunately seem to have died more recently of their injuries and uh, as you uh, come to the other side of the market square uh, near Rachel's uh, you find the little huddled body of Herb oh. outside the door of Rachel's um, with an older woman uh, cradling him in his arm, in her arms, um, which you assume is probably his sister. And uh, as you go around the corner by Rachel's, uh, you find the uh, the body of the rent boy you murdered still in the alleyway, and. Uh, and then uh, as you head even further on you come to the sports fields that separate the main town from the Salty's Enclave and you recall that there is no cover um, between here and the Salty's Enclave can we sort of go the, the long way round to the far end of the fields first before trying to cut across. Um, the area that the fields occupy is nominally sort of square. Um, if you walk around the fields, you're just the other side of the fields from the Salty Sun Cave. Essentially, you have a square with you at this side, the Salty Sun Cave here. For mm -hmm. here, <laughs> if you walk to the other side, you've just got to cross the field. <laughs> you've just got to walk across the artillery range. If you recall, 
was exactly what they came, seemed to have used it for. At least at some point. Um, is there any chance at this point we could double back to find Jasmine if she still has Herb sort of in that doorway to, to, to find out what's going on before we try and undertake the suicidal run which uh, across these marshalling fields. You want to go back and interrogate a corpse? Oh, was she dead as well? Oh, yes. Oh. Very much so. And no. You have met um, no living beings. Apart from possibly some, like, rats. Anita and takes Jerry. a quick glance round, uh, puts her head down and legs it across the field. <laughs> She's going for it. The, the, the whole one of you capable yep. of legging it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, leaves the other two behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just going to run across the field to see what happens. Okay. My, her theory is that if she makes it across, bonus, the other two should be able to make it across. If she doesn't make it across and there's something starts shooting at her, the others know to go. You um, you make it to a small building that seems at some point it's like a small like square wooden uh, like uh, brick building. It might have been a scout hut at one point or something like that. You know, a bowls club, a football club, a scout hut, something like that. And uh, you reach that, and you know, you're not by any means an athlete. You uh, <laughs> you re you reach it, you know. Hand against the wall, you're you're puffed out, but you know you've been on sort of tender hooks this whole time. Uh, there's been no shout, there's been no cannon fire, there's you know, there's been no sign that you've been spotted. She's gonna, after trying to get her breath back, is going to wave at the other two to make them come as well. Okay. Before oh. setting off, Zeke's going to have a look up towards the fort to see whether anyone's actually looking out this way. I can do it, yeah. Give it a problem. Um, not great. Ten total. Um, as you look up there, you're pretty sure you see people moving on the walls. Um, I mean, they're fairly high up, and they're in, you know, they're in blue uniforms against a blue sky. Okay. Uh, doesn't um, really help much. Um, well, they're in blue jackets. Uh, so, yeah, you're pretty sure you see people on the walls, but you're not entirely sure. You, you, know, you don't have, like, handy, like, you know, field of view indicators. Fair some enough. of them might be looking your way but you are far enough away to be a little dot the other side of a large field okay so Zeke will make the run as well sort of as quickly as he can hobble with his metal contraptions <laughs> give, me, give me a give me a physical uh, physical endurance physical endurance I assume you know, Timmy's running at the same time so give me another as well um, yes in uh, the manner of a rather well known Dark snake. She is going to go forth. Oh fuck! Um, I think I'm going to to use a legendary point to to re-roll that. Okay. Much better. <sighs> um, yeah. Same. Physical endurance. That becomes. Why can't I do simple maths? Eight and seven is fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You, you manage to stump across. I mean, you're not as you're not as fast as you want to be, but you might you might well be as fast as you're ever going to be. <laughs> oh God, Timmy! Have you rolled a double eleven again? 
Uh, are we going to try for a third? No, we can't. No. Can't re-roll a re-roll. No. Okay. Fuck off. Anita and Zeke rush across to this, this squat brick building. Um. God. Well fed, well rested, feeling no pain. Timmy decides... Fuck it. This can't hurt. I'm just going to run straight for the enclave. <laughs> Fuck all this pansy step-by-step -step bullshit. And you see her just... She just bolts off in a dramatically different direction to the one you were you running here. Sort of there to there to here. Uh, she just makes a straight run for the enclave gates. And... She's doing well. Um, you know, she she passes where she passes sort of the relative position where you are, and she starts to get to sort of where the uh, where the materials were stacked up outside the gates, uh, where Lamb unfortunately jumped Zeke, <laughs> and in that direction. Uh, at which point, clearly, there's some sort of you know, there, there's a change in the character of the ground uh, from. <coughs> From from mud and, and broken concrete to uh, to broken concrete and wooden slats. At which point she kicks a toe into between the slats and just you know completely you know eats a dick and fails all over a, a big pile of crates <laughs> and barrels into them sideways. Um, and they start to sort of they will fall over and make a, a fuck ton of noise. And yeah, you know, and quite clearly, a pile of crates changes shape as they fall. And you hear from up on the fort, you know, you hear, you know, an inarticulate shout from up on the fort, you know, in the you know, parade ground barking, you know, and uh, you know, a ranging flare is fired. Oh the crap! Direction. They know we're here. Uh, leg it before they can load anything? Well, um, seems like the way. Yeah. Um. Leg it. Alright, okay. Well, are you going to attempt to be sneaky about this? Are you just pummeling it as hard as you can? Are you, what? Going as hard as I can. Okay. Uh, I think seeing Anita leg it as hard as she can. Zeke is going to, to try and take the, the slower, more stealthy approach, hoping that she will... <laughs> <laughs> Diversify your target profile. <laughs> Draw the fire. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, so say, yeah. Diversify your target profile. So, yes, yeah, she's... Yeah, so... So are you running for the crates where Timmy's hurt, or are you running for the gates? Try and get where you're going. She's going to run for the gates, because she thinks if we can get to the gates, we can get some help. Okay. You're running for the gates. Uh, so, I assume if you're doing the, you know, the, the zag to her zig, Zeke is running to the marshalling yard. Where the crates are, not necessarily to help anyone, but to get in cover <laughs> faster. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a longer route, but it's more covered. Okay. <laughs> so yes, give me yourself. Uh, I'm just going to say, Anita can do this. You know, it, it it it's common sense. It's deadly danger. You're not attempting to be to, uh, be quiet or subtle. Zeke, however, you're going to need to sneak. Okay. Here we go. Fifteen. Yeah, you um, you rush off. You're pretty sure. You know, you don't feel like burning crosshairs between your shoulder blades at any point. You know, you're still. You're still a dude hobbling along, in a, you know, carrying a heavy bindle, 
across the field. But you kind of feel like, you know, of the two threats, you're definitely lesser. And you arrive, you know, in the cool shade of a large pile of, I don't know, you know, assorted bullshit. You know, wooden planks or something. You can you you have the you have the time and space to take you know several breaths more than you dared take beforehand. Um, Timmy, you are buried in crates. You're not hurt as such. You you are buried. Uh, you may hear from outside. You dead under there. <laughs> okay, for the sake of sake of argument, Zeke has taken <laughs> taken cover behind the crates. <laughs> um, Timmy would probably try kicking at the crates with her good leg um, and attempt to unbury herself okay hmm. give, me a, give me a pure brute strength and okay. kick yourself clear Let's see if we can get anything other than a bloody 11 oh <laughs> Uh, uh, 15 hmm. yeah actually um you uh okay you you start kicking at the boxes um you don't break the box you're kicking uh but instead you you kick yourself clear of the pile so you just sort of you stamp down and you slide up sort of thing um and uh Zeke is gifted with the the peculiar sight of someone sort of exiting a pile of wooden boxes on the <laughs> diagonal. And your your sort of your head and shoulders appear from a pile of things, you know, without the aid of your arms to pull you out. <laughs> you pop up like a cork. Um, rather odd. Uh, yes. Let's put, Anita, you have arrived at the gates of, of the Enclave. Um, they're, they're open. That doesn't happen. That's strange, but she runs in. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, you run on in and uh, you come to the little like, merchant's area where there are the people selling fermented piss and, you know, and, 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 and and like you know feces for using as fertilizer on land and you know all the things that people can make at sea uh, or you know repair out on the rigs and bring to land um, and once again like anything of any real use has been taken and you see bodies sort of lying unmoving most have been beaten, uh, but some have been shot. Many are burning, uh, or have been burned. But it seems that the immediate area around you has been cleared. I'm going to keep heading towards uh, Captain Morgan's ship. Yeah. Unless there's anywhere that is more defensible within the enclave. It's not really, really comes to mind. You, know, it's not, you haven't really been anywhere else in the enclave. No, in that you case, head straight towards. Sort of thing, to get yeah. to the bottle and bride. But apart from that, you've never really been anywhere else. Yeah. So yeah, I... you heading off towards, uh, towards Morgan's ship, office, home. Yeah. Okay, then. That's the one. Cool. So, Timmy and Zeke, you are within sight distance of each other. You could easily, you know, yeah, Zeke, you could easily help Timmy extricate herself from her fi failure. Um, <laughs> but what are you doing? Timmy, your um, arms are currently pinned. From sort of where we are, is there like a... A clear line of sight to the fort, or are we behind sort of a reasonable amount of cover that they would have to guess to shell us? Um, 
you are behind a fair decent amount of cover. Uh, Timmy is in the first line of cover. If they wanted to shell Timmy, they would just shell the pile of boxes she's currently laying in. Um, I think Zeke will reach over and sort of grab for Timmy's collar. Just to sort of haul her bodily out. Um, maybe a, a little indelicately, but hey ho. Okay. I think she's been through worse recently. Four, eight, seven grapple. plus uh, a grapple. Yeah, oh, sweet. A grapple. That becomes a. Right, well, it's still seven plus three. Okay, then. So, yeah. Uh, on, a, on a ten, you, you, you start to sort of pull her out. You, know, you haven't. You don't make enormous headway. Uh, she's pretty well jammed in there. Those boxes are heavy. Um, but you know, yeah, you, you're loosening her up there. Um, she managed to get her arms free. She's still sort of pinned down from the waist. But Timmy, what are you doing? You've been a, uh, you've been pulled out of a pile of boxes. Your arms are free. Your legs are pinned. Okay, so with uh, arms free then Timmy is going to attempt to also wiggle out of, of these. Um, we, we on a strength or a... Let's give it dexterity. Well, you're, you're trying to, trying to, you know, slippery fish your way out of this. Uh, ten. Okay. Eleven. No, eleven. I okay. can't count. Yeah, I say with your combined efforts, uh, you just about managed to get free uh, before uh, before the first sort of large thud sort of is heard from above on the fort, and uh, you're uh, you're pretty sure that you're that, it, that you're meant to hear the boom before the thud. Uh, but you're not entirely sure what's happened. <laughs> Nothing seems to be exploding. Um, hearing the, the the boom, Zeke is going to to make sort of a, a straight shot for uh, the, the enclave gates, uh, to hit you onto another endurance physical. Yep. Do we need to run or two naked legs? Eight and seven. So fifteen. Okay. Yeah, you uh you, you pound it to the other side of the marshalling yard sort of area. You're 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 next to the gate, but not inside yet. Uh Timmy, you have been freed from boxes. Uh Zeke vanishes. Having pulled you free <laughs> helped you pull yourself free. <laughs> You hear a you hear an artillery like thud, uh, and all of a sudden Zeke is no longer next to you. Um, at this point, you see a second flare um, falling down towards you. It looks like they've sort of worked out where the elevation is. They've managed to fire a ranging flare out. Okay. They're trying to bracket you. Um. So I have all limbs available and free to use. Yep. Excellent. All you have to do is not fail. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm going to head straight towards uh, the wall. So away from the boxes and closer towards where they're firing from. So where they're, where they're up on, on the hill. Yeah. So if they fire downwards, they're going to hit themselves and... The, can run back across the field to the bottom of the hill they're firing down from if you want, yes. Good. Is it or close you could run, run into the enclave? Um, yeah, go on, we'll run into the enclave. Yeah, you're like next to the enclave gates. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. What okay. are we running up, rolling on? Um, I'll say, being that you're all trying to do this now, we'll just say you can do it. Uh, you will meet Anita. In the enclave, just to get you all back together, for Christ's sake. Um, <laughs> and you, uh, you, you two both enter the gates. Um, 
just in time to see Anita sort of entering, uh, or entering the, the the next area past the merchant sort of court, the little uh, little square, uh, wandering off towards where you recall Morgan had a, a landed boat, uh, sort of run aground. So she was never really at land; she was always in her boat because <laughs> uh, she you know, didn't didn't look very kindly upon you know, having to be a salt captain um, so yes you uh, all sort of get back together and uh, when you uh, you wander through you find the area where uh, you recall Lamb threw himself down to toxic mud and uh, you find the, the lower hull of, of Morgan's boat burned out that this area has been thoroughly shelled some of the uh, the buildings and jetties around it have been blown to hell there's ashes and uh, sort of smoking timbers here do, do any of the boats appear intact um, most of the boats here were sort of encircled by jetties and usable anyway uh, many of them probably wouldn't have floated uh, as boats if they weren't attached to do, jetties. Sorry, do, do any of the boat buildings appear intact and inhabitable? Um, most of them, again, have been damaged by shelling and fire. Um, some of them are standing, but very little seems to have survived intact. Um, it appears that it appears that, you know, this bombardment was directed by people who knew that the captain was here which wasn't exactly a secret did Morgan ever tell us a rough idea of where the tunnel was up to the fort and she said that it connected from the enclave up to the hill Hmm. So, in that case, uh, Anita's going to start searching for this. See if she can see anything that looks like it could be a, a tunnel up, or a cave, or anything like that. Okay. Or a sewer entrance. Okay. Basically, Sorry. any tunnel-like structure. Okay. So that's that's where we're going with this, is it? We're looking for a tunnel, are we? Um, I think Zeke, not being one to, to run headlong into danger, um, we'll, we'll be looking for any surviving salties. Um, I assume they're staying fairly close to Timmy as well, because he can't communicate with the majority of them. Timmy, your your friend and captain is gone. Your fellow salties are gone. Your the, the crew of the boat you were assigned to was gone. Uh, what are you doing right now? I think Timmy would be searching with Seek for any survivors. Um, if Captain Morgan is gone, then that's probably all resistance against the blue coats gone. Um, I wonder. I, I wonder whether she'd be sort of contemplating um, whether revenge is actually worth it at that point. But then, kind of struggling with ideas of actually wanted to go out there and kill everyone um, in the most creative way possible um, but for now I think she would be searching for some, any survivors um, okay. Okay. Um, as you are wandering around in the enclave 
looking for survivors or clues or in this case tunnels secret entrances anything you can um, as you are there you you pick up a tune in the air it's a uh, it's sort of incongruously jaunty it's not very clear it's uh but it's definitely there there's someone you know yeah, there's someone on some kind of like shitty kazoo playing like sailor's hornpipe or something <laughs> and in that sort of uh in that sort of absent minded way that someone does when they're meant to be doing something else as equal is he being the the occasional tracker that he is, but being a, a wanderer and outdoorsman, will um, sort of do his best to follow the the sounds. Um, hopefully, uh, not too overpowered by the sound of the the fizzing ocean below. Yeah, you um. So you, you try to follow the sounds. Um, it's a little eerie as you get sort of further into the enclave. You know, the, the, the sound gets a bit muddled as to where it's coming from. You know, the, Perception. The wind off of the sea, sort of a uh, you know, you know, blows it in odd ways. Yeah, go for perception. Yeah. That's less good. Uh, dirty eleven. Dirty eleven. Um, yeah. You're you're pretty sure it's it's coming from the inland side of the uh, of the of the enclave. Sort of further further down. And as you uh, as you head along that way, uh, you can see that. The enclave wall has merged with buildings that were already there in order to sort of cover over. Like the, the first two floors of three court, a three story building have been demolished to make it a shell that curls over so you can't see behind the wall. Um, and uh, in the shade of this building, you you can see a uh, you can see a young boy. Sitting playing some shitty kazoo like instrument. It, it doesn't happen to be the one that Timmy threatened last time we were here with uh, with, with Roger's ear in order to get some thread, does it? He doesn't look that familiar, does he? Um, he might well. <laughs> <laughs> and on seeing you, his face turns white. <laughs> the music stops and you see him bolt. Uh, he just he hops down from the little pile of like junk that he was sitting on and you see him run away. And he just like in, in moments he just vanishes behind a pile of rubble. Um Zeke's going to head in the general direction that he bolted to, assuming that he was running to safety. It has more people. Okay. Yeah. Head off that way. And, uh... Yeah. The minute you, you round this, uh... This pile of rubbish, you are confronted by... A welcome sight of a pair of rather bedraggled looking salties with large makeshift looking weapons and a tall woman in a leg brace lifts a large and familiar looking pistol <laughs> says, what the bloody hell do you think you're doing here? <laughs> 
and we are once again introduced to Salt Captain Morgan. And there we're gonna leave it. <laughs> <For tonight. laughs> because we've run over time. So <laughs> that was Monday Let's Get Nuked. I thought we were gonna get lots of combats and you were gonna run into blue coats, but that didn't happen. So we big do that. Yeah. So yeah, how did how did you destroy the plans I carefully made while you went and sat in a fast food restaurant? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have made it so interesting. <laughs> uh, that was your own fault. <laughs> I did warn you. Yeah, true. <laughs> but yes, that was uh, my name is Get Nuked. I was thirsty. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Thirsty underscore BTP. You can find me on Bloodthirsty Puppets to code UK. You can occasionally hear me on podcasts when people ask me to go on them and I remember to do that. Um, yeah. That was yet another masterclass in how to let other people guide the situation. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I think, I think we're all just getting complacent and not rolling dice. Um, we could roll dice at things. We could investigate. We're remarkably passive nowadays. We used to be far more aggressive in our dice rolling. Uh, but yeah, there we are. Um, I say, yeah. It takes me a little while to get my head back up the narrative. So, we shall <laughs> leap to Spanners. Oh, I am Spanners. I was playing Timmy, um, who has remarkably more hit points than she did when she started the session. Um, yeah. I can't believe I like, rolled double elevens again. That's insane. Mm. Just those dice are spending the next month in a box. Um, dice but jail. yeah, you, dice jail. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at uh, spanners underscore acx. Uh, you can find me on dark dice, um, which it has another couple of episodes released. So go and download it from everywhere. Um, you can find me on Counterbalance and on uh, other podcasts. Um, yeah, stuff. Twitter, much Twitter, <laughs> and here Mondays. It's most important there, of course. Most importantly, here on Mondays. Mm. Excellent. So now I should jump to Lilf. I'm Lilf. I was playing Anita who eventually remembered that she was supposed to heal people <laughs> and what she needed so and remembered her childhood vaguely mm. very vaguely <laughs> um you can find me on twitter at lil 21 you can find me on a saturday night uh on kit Battlebeard's channel playing some D, D in defenders of the dusk do not ask, not ask me what time that is because time zones, spring time, mm. their clocks have changed, ours haven't. I'm confused. I turn up when I get a message to say, Where the hell are you? And Don't you worry, can occasionally. Like another week. Yeah. And then I'll go back to normal. Yay! <laughs> uh, you can also find me occasionally on Corpses and Curios on the. Um, the holiday specials, mm. which are normally very special. <laughs> uh, most recent one of those out is the Valentine's Day one. That got interesting. And the next one coming out will be the Easter special, which plots may or may not be afoot. Mm. And that's me, I think. Excellent. So. Now we should go to the inimitable Ivor. <laughs> I've been Ivor playing Zeke. Um, that, that was good fun. Um, I will certainly miss the, the, the boots of this wanderer in days to come. But um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Ivor underscore DNABC um, here on a Monday night and but otherwise, sitting quietly and inconspicuously 
in the nebulous north. So yes, that was all our players. Once again, this was a game in Nuked, uh, which is a spiced setting. And if you were watching with us on Twitch, thank you for doing that. And you probably did something in chat, which I probably forgot to read because I was desperately improvising. Um, <laughs> And trying to remember names of people who I would let you find in the rubble. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, hurrah! Remember to put this on YouTube. Um, and if you don't watch it on either of those, why aren't you watching it on my official channels? God. Uh, so yeah. Um, once again, can't recall what I say at the end. So, drink up. Chin chin. There we are. Oh, God. I warned you at the start. You did. If you wanted us to not hang around in a burger joint, you shouldn't have made it so interesting to explore. <laughs> uh, you have three doors. <laughs> of course, we're going to go in all three. Yeah. Well, Big yeah. fridge. Yep. Yeah, definitely <laughs> going to investigate that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I needed to get some food into you people. You people hadn't said that you'd eaten in, like, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Your characters needed to have some goddamn food. Wasn't it because the last time we actually physically ate something, um, you burned us? So we yes. <laughs> yes, I seem to recall that. No, that was when you ate the, 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 like the potentially toxic death chilli. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't the last time you ate something. You, you, yeah. ate, you ate twice with the salties. Well, I suppose, yeah, we had the, the weird gruel seaweed stuff. It wasn't essentially implied that we were eating with the salties. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't sat down and actually done it. So. Mm. Like, here is a situation where you have to survive. Sit down and eat. Make sure you have enough heat. Make Find a place to sleep. You're on a boat. Fair enough. But, like... When you went off and like did murdering, you didn't stop and have breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. If you, <laughs> you believe must people always are have breakfast you. before you go out and murder people. Of course yes. you must. <laughs> go. <laughs> Five out of ten nutritionists who've been bought off by breakfast cereal companies agree. Um... <laughs> oh, but yeah. Thanks for playing, guys. It's... That was fun. Thank you. It would never be the same without you. <laughs> it, it might go to plan, but it wouldn't be the same. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, guys.